Hello everyone, this is uh, open day at the doctoral school at the WUSD. Uh, my name is Zuzanna Pavlak, I am head of music editorial and programming here at WUSD Radio Luz. I really encourage you to check out what we got for you at 91.6 FM, but today I will be hosting uh, a meeting that hopefully will answer all of your questions you might have about doctoral school, including admission rules, the interview format, and all of the important facts that for sure will be useful for someone at least a bit interested in the field degree studies and reaching the PhDs uh, in technical studies. And now I would like to introduce you to our today's experts uh, who will share the most important information regarding PhD experiences and the recruitment process. First of them is, of course, the Dean of the Doctoral School at WUSD, Professor Krzysztof Walkowie. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Professor Agnieszka Wołomańska, Vice Dean for Doctoral Students. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Natalia Tyszkiewicz, PhD student at Chemical Sciences, Vice President of Doctorant Student Council. Good afternoon. Nice to see you with us. Hello. And last but not least, today with us there is also Arif Eftekar Ahmed, fourth year PhD student at environmental engineering, mining and energy, and also an international representative at Szkoła Doktorska. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so in front of me, I have a number of questions for all of our wonderful guests today. Also, if you, dear participants, will have some more important questions, feel free to ask via our today's chat on, on live, and we will reach to those questions. Uh, for all of these questions, we'll be answering Professor Renata Krzyżyńska. She is the Vice Dean of Doctoral School. And let me start with a very general overview on doctoral studies that hopefully will help us draw a bigger picture about today's topic. A question to Professor Volkowiak. Um, what does it mean to do a doctorate at the doctorate school? Okay, so the doctoral school is the default way to make a PhD in Poland. It was introduced five years ago by a Polish law on higher education. In general, the main assumptions are that every PhD student, including a foreigner, receives a scholarship. Moreover, the education is for free. There is no NFE. In general, the doctoral school in Poland, in our university, is quite similar to doctoral education systems in other countries in Europe and in uh, other continents. So the key goal is to prepare the PhD student to write the doctoral dissertation and then to defend and obtain the PhD degree. Uh, so as a doctoral school, we offer various courses that provide soft skills and hard skills that are very important for making research on different areas. Uh, moreover, the doctoral school is responsible to check the progress of PhD. So we have a system of plans and reports that are submitted every semester or every year. Furthermore, the PhD, the doctoral school is also responsible for the key milestones of the doctoral education that are defined by the Polish law. The first milestone is uh, assignment of the supervisor. It is done in within the first three months of education. The second milestone is individual research plan that is to be submitted after the first year of education. The next milestone is the midterm evaluation. It is uh, in the half of education, so after two years, and it is to check the progress of the individual research plan implementation. Uh, moreover, uh, most of the time, the PhD student spends on the research work uh, in the group or department of the supervisor. So now this may be a good moment to tell you a few words uh, about the research work and the doctoral dissertation. Uh, so in general, the doctoral dissertation in Polish law is defined uh, as follows. The doctoral dissertation demonstrates the candidate's general theoretic knowledge in a discipline and the ability to conduct research work independently. The subject matter of the doctoral dissertation shall be an original solution to a scientific problem. So, very few words, maybe not uh, giving the, the whole picture. So now I will give you some more details. In general, the doctoral dissertation is something similar to master thesis. Most of you are currently doing the master thesis or you already obtained the master degree. But the doctoral dissertation is something 
much more complicated uh, on the higher level than master thesis. And there are several important steps of the research work. Probably some of you are aware of this, but I think this is a good moment to describe the, the most important steps. So the first step usually is the literature review. So you must go through different publications from journals, from conferences to check the knowledge on the research area you, you want, you plan to work on. And uh, to be honest, probably you, you will have to read hundreds of publications to, to prepare the doctoral dissertation. And the second step is to define the research problem you want to solve, you want to address. And of course, there are different uh, differences uh, between uh, disciplines and the research area. The next step is to try to find a solution to the problem, a research method. For instance, I am from computer science, so probably now the most popular research method are some machine learning algorithms. In chemistry, the research method is just to work in the laboratory. Then you should, have, you should make a lot of experiments or simulations to obtain the results. The next step is to analyze the results. If the results are satisfactory, you can go further, but in many cases, the results are not so good. So maybe you should come back to the research method, modify something and repeat the simulations. And there is a type of loop so that the steps could be repeated many, many times. If finally the results are good, you can try to write them down and to publish them in a journal paper and conference paper. And these steps are required for publications. You need a few publications for doctoral dissertation as well for the doctoral dissertation itself. So I strongly recommend that you should uh, look for some doctoral dissertations in the research area you, you plan to work on. You can ask your supervisor or you can just Google to check what is really a doctoral dissertation, to be aware what should be the result of four years spent in the doctoral school. Okay, uh, so in Poland, the degree, the doctoral degree is given in a scientific discipline. Uh, we have about 60 of them. Our university and our doctoral school provides education and next the degree, doctoral degree in 13 disciplines. Most of them are uh, technical ones, engineering ones, but also we offer education in basic sciences like mathematics, chemistry and physics, as well as uh, management sciences and quality studies. Okay, so to summarize the introduction part, we'll come back to some issues I just presented probably during, during this, this meeting. So the key goal of doctoral school is to prepare the doctoral student to write the dissertation and to make the research which is necessary to, uh, to obtain the doctoral degree. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for this very clear information. Uh, now we're glad to have our two PhD students with us today. They will share their general experiences on studying in WUSD. Uh, Natalia, Arif, a uh, question for you. Why is it worth pursuing a doctorate at the Doctoral School of uh, Wrocław University of Science and Technology? And could you tell us about it from your perspective, Natalia? Uh, okay, so uh, I think that uh, our doctoral school uh, has several advantages um, among other universities. Uh, our doctoral school is one of the largest uh, doctoral school uh, in Poland, where PhD students, uh, um, as Professor said, uh, can pursue the um, PhD in uh, 13, one of the 13 educational disciplines. Uh, now, uh, studies are conducted uh, only in English, uh, so it improve, uh, improves language skills and prepares more for the international cooperations. Uh, PhD students uh, have uh, the opportunity to uh, participate free of charge in uh, additional foreign uh, languages uh, courses and also sports activities. Uh, doctoral students uh, also uh, has, have the opportunity to receive uh, financial support for making an internship. For example, now we have an uh, interdoc school program and also uh, PhD students uh, can apply uh, to Erasmus Plus um, program. Uh, the next thing is um, that our university is among a group of the universities in Poland where the uh, amount of scholarship is uh, higher than planned in the law. 
uh, and furthermore, uh, PhD students have also opportunities uh, for additional scholarships uh, in our doctoral school. Uh, for example, for uh, academic achievement, scientific achievement, and also for the um, activities in the doctoral community. Uh, also, our university is uh, involved in the UNITE program. Uh, so it is university network for innovation, technology, and uh, engineering. And it is a network uh, that connects nine European uh, universities. And uh, this project includes um, activities related to the management uh, of the doctoral uh, schools uh, also. And uh, the last thing, um, it's uh, about the Doctoral Students Council, because Doctoral Students Council um, organizes many events to integrate the doctoral community. Uh, and, and it is not so common at other universities uh, in our country. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's a lot of information and a lot of advantages also. And how about you, Arif? Well, thank you for giving me opportunity to talk something. Uh, I would like to introduce myself a bit. Uh, yeah, like my name is Arif Iftekar Ahmed. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm doing my PhD here and I'm in my fourth year of studies. I also have completed my master's from here and I'm doing my PhD in environmental engineering and the name of my supervisor is Professor Dr. Habilitat Katajana Maeskanovak. Now coming back to the question, in my opinion, our university has a very uh, good rank. So I will say that this is a very well ranked university. And if uh, we look at the quality and the number of publications every year, the number of publications from several departments are uh, published in very uh, high impact factor, factor journals. So uh, by considering all of the things and uh, the crucial information that Natalia already discussed uh, during her speech, I will say to choose this university for PhD and pursuing a PhD degree from our Ishpala Doktorska, uh, I will say it is a very good choice for the future PhD students. And by considering all those facts, I will say this is simply a best option uh, to do PhD in our university, I mean in groups of University of Science and Technology or uh, Politik of Slavska. That I would like to sum up uh, for this question. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Also, we will dig into that topic for sure later. And now let's go back to Professor Valkoviak, uh, because I would like to uh, talk about uh, something about the recruitment process. What are the admission rules for the doctoral school and how should one prepare for recruitment? And what application documents are required? What are the deadlines? Now it's uh, time to talk about it with uh, Professor Valkoviak. Okay, so, so for sure these information are very important. So first of all, the recruitment admission rules were accepted by the University Synod in December last year. So I'm telling this uh, because this is, uh, it shows how important is the document. And in general, the, the, the admission system is a competition. So our university provides 151 places in the doctoral school with the scholarship by, paid by the university. The places are divided to this 13 scientific disciplines proportionally to the size of the discipline. So in, uh, in every discipline, there is a separate contest. So the first decision you should make is to select the discipline. If you are not so sure, you can ask us or, or some professors from our university. And the, the whole recruitment process is done by a recruitment committee that includes professors from a particular discipline. And the committee evaluates every candidate in five uh, criteria, five elements. So the first one are the grades. So the, the C, CGPA or in Polish, średnia ze studiów. And the weight of this uh, criteria is uh, 20%. The second uh, element evaluated is the comment of English. So we require at least a B2 level. And according to your grades, to your certificate, we assign the particular number of points because I must underline that in every criteria, you can get from zero to 10 points. And then this result is multiplied by the weight. So the English comment has a weight of 10%. The third element uh, is uh, the proposal of the PhD. So the PhD project with a weight of 10%. So before the recruitment process, you should prepare 
the proposal, the PhD proposal, usually it is prepared with the future supervisor. So it is very important that you should meet with the supervisor and discuss these elements. And the two most important elements with the weight of 30% is uh, the scientific activity uh, record, yes? So you should provide documents like CV and other, do other documents presenting your achievements from the master studies, like maybe publications, uh, a participation in conferences, some other activities. And the last element is the interview. So every candidate uh, meets with the committee. For foreigners, it could be an online meeting, and the committee can ask any question, and finally, that there is an um, evaluation. So we sum the points obtaining every of the uh, criteria, and we obtain the final result, which is from zero points to 100 points. And the first requirement is to obtain at least 50 points. And then we prepare a ranking list, and the best candidates uh, are accepted according to the limit in a particular discipline. Uh, so what about the document? So all the details I'm just uh, presenting are available on our web page. So there are a lot of documents required. I will only focus on the most important one. So the first one is a CV, but you should prepare the CV just for recruitment process for the doctoral school. And underline the achievements that are important for the research work. Also, we, we need your diploma, your master diploma and, and first degree studies diploma. Uh, we also uh, need uh, the transcript of record with your grades, uh, the characteristic of your activity, scientific activity, this description of initial concept, concept of PhD I just mentioned. Also, very important is the document confirming your knowledge of English the, on the B2 uh, level. And maybe a few words about the deadline. So the recruitment process will start on May 16. So we'll open the IT system. So all the, all the recruitment process will be made in a special system. And we'll collect the application, the documents till June 12. Then uh, we analyze documents. If something is missing, we ask to provide some additional uh, information or to uh, put some extra uh, documents. And uh, the interviews are in the time between June 26 till July 11. So the committee uh, meets with the, with the candidates. And the results will be available from July 25th. Uh, so the next step, if you are accepted, if you are on the ranking list uh, quite high, and uh, for the foreigners, we issue a special document. And with this document, you can apply for Polish visa in your country. So we are trying to do this as fast as possible uh, because sometimes the, the visa process is quite long. If uh, you cannot obtain the visa till the 1st of October when we start the new academic year, there is also possibility to start the education in our doctoral school from the summer semester, which is usually the beginning of March. So it means that you gain some extra time to, to get the visa in your country. But our advice is to start to obtain the visa as fast as possible, because in some countries, the process is uh, very, very long. OK, thank you. Thank you, Professor, for sharing with all of us all the details about recruitation process. Uh, let's say it one again. It's 12th of uh, June, it's the deadline of uh, recruitation. And uh, still sticking to the uh, recruitment process, a few questions for Professor Agnieszka Wołomańska. Uh, first, let's share a few details about uh, the interview process. Uh, which aspects are assessed during the interview? Thank you. So as it was said, the interview, this is one of the uh, criterion uh, that is very important during the recruitment process and everything depends uh, which discipline the candidate selected. So I am representing the discipline mathematics and uh, for instance in this discipline uh, the, the first point is the presentation and during the presentation the candidate is giving the description of the initial concept of the dissertation uh, or some some of the candidates present the master thesis results or or even the engineering thesis results. So some aspects related to the research. After that, uh, there is a short interview. During the interview, there are some questions from the audience, I mean, from the committee. 
and we are asking about uh, everything which is related to the presentation that we showed uh, that we that we see and and of course there are some questions related to the future work so this is this is in my discipline uh, so but i know that in different disciplines we can have a, a little bit different let's say uh, points but the most important thing is the presentation so 15 minutes presentations and after that there is the short interview with the candidate uh, and after that, the committee is giving the points, as it was mentioned by Professor Varkovic. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So that was all about uh, a very important stage of the recruitment process, which is an interview. But what about uh, further steps? Does the candidate have to have a potential supervisor to be admitted to the doctoral school? Um, I would like Professor Agnieszka Wolmańska to also cover that question for us. Yeah, very important question. So from two years, we changed the rules. And before the candidate is thinking, is starting to thinking about the, the, the doctoral school, she or he needs to contact to the potential supervisor. So this is important because as, as it was said, we are preparing so that the candidates are preparing the description of the initial concept of the dissertation. So it is good to contact with some professor who has some idea how to deal with with this and uh, of course uh, how to how to contact with this how to find the supervisor uh, there are at least two ways or even three the first one is uh, just to contact uh, by the head of the discipline on our web page you can find the all disciplines that professor valkovic described and the, there are also names of the heads of the disciplines and one of the way how to find the, the the potential supervisor is to contact with the head of the discipline the second way is to go to our web page and on the web page you can find the database for the supervisors. Uh, uh, if you go to this database, you can find the supervisor by names, but also by the disciplines and also the topics they, they are interested in. So you can find, for instance, if you are interested in machine learning techniques, so the, the keyword is the machine learning and you can find all professors and all potential supervisors who are interested in that. And the last but not, not least point uh, is that the supervisor very often is the supervisor that was the, the during the, the master thesis. So uh, some of the students who finish uh, the, the master thesis or master study, they want to continue with this person, the collaboration. And this person is just a supervisor of the master of the of the doctoral thesis. Thanks. Thank you very much. And before uh, thank you. I would like to ask uh, sure. one thing about uh, from my experience, like I'm uh, interested to tell something more about selecting the supervisor. Uh, is it possible to hear me? Yes, we can hear you very clear. Okay, but uh, is it possible because I cannot see like, uh, can you see me also? Okay, so Arif, could you repeat the question? Because the question is probably yes, actually, to me or actually, to I would like to I would like to share some of my experience how to find a potential. Okay, so please, please continue. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. So uh, I would like to say that Professor Volmanska explained everything very clearly. But from my opinion, as a uh, fourth year PhD student and international representative in Ishkala Doktorska, I will suggest that uh, also it is better to uh, read the uh, supervisor's article, like from our database and also from our, let's say, for example, uh, from our university website. Of course, they can for sure uh, find some uh, professor who are suitable or who are, let's say, for example, uh, working on the same field. So the candidate can find a potential supervisor. At the same time, they can read their research papers to get sure that the topic he or she is interested to work is going to match with that supervisor. In my opinion, uh, this will be a good step to choose a proper one for the PhD. And also, uh, I would like to share that in our uh, Polish Universities, sometimes we organize conferences, sometimes by online, or let's say sometimes also someone, if also is studying here, he or she can attend any conferences. They also be able to talk with professors directly and also uh, to share their experience or expectations. So it will be better to find someone who will be suitable for the 
uh, future supervisor of PhD studies that I would I wanted to mention uh, as a tips or like as uh, that the, the potential students can uh, think also in this way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ari, for clarifying that information. Uh, I would like also mention something because I would like to um, the, our participants to remember that uh, you can always ask something on uh, our uh, chat on our uh, live. Uh, and now let's go back for a minute uh, to our PhD student Natalia again. Uh, she will explain us how does the recruitment process look like from students' perspective. And also, um, Natalia, could you please tell me which elements are the most difficult? Uh, okay, so um, at the very beginning, uh, it is a good idea to choose a potential supervisor uh, and talk to him or her uh, about the possibility of making a dissertation uh, and then think about the topic of PhD thesis. And uh, after that, uh, you can start prepare, preparing uh, all the documentation necessary for the recruitment. And uh, uh, depending on which educational uh, discipline you want to recruit to, uh, you will need certain uh, documents. So. Um, Information about this is uh, always available uh, in the recruitment rules for the each year. Uh, and as professor said, the, we have uh, five parts for which um, P, uh, PhD candidates are assessed. Uh, and for me, uh, maybe not difficult, but uh, mm, the most stressful uh, part was this interview part uh, because uh, mm, uh, at such uh, interview in my discipline, so in chemical sciences, um, you can have uh, a lot of questions about your future dissertation. And um, um, I think that uh, the candidates may not necessarily know answer uh, about that. So therefore, uh, it's really good to prepare yourself uh, very well for the interview and think about the research you are planning uh, to do so that you will uh, feel more confident answering the uh, committee's uh, questions. And uh, it is also really good to think about uh, recruitment uh, for a doctoral school and uh, i think at least five or four months because uh, before the recruitment starts uh, because you will still have time for improve your uh, mm, for example scientific skills so you can attend some uh, conferences or write a manuscript publish something and uh, finally in the recruitment process you will have uh, more points so uh, you will uh, have better chance to to go to the phd okay thank you i'm sure that was a bunch of very useful information for our participants and let's go back to professor agnieszka uh, Wyłomańska because i have a very general questions uh, about the topic we did not uh, cover yet. Uh, what is the curriculum at the Doctoral School of Wrocław University of Science and Technology? Okay, so uh, during the, the, the study, so the, <clears throat> the PhD students uh, need to take some uh, obligatory courses and also the additional courses. So uh, in the group of obligatory courses, we have a uh, two important courses that are strictly related to the discipline. So the first one is the recent tr uh, research trends in the discipline. Uh, and this is the course that has uh, 30 hours. Uh, the next uh, very important course, this is reporting seminar of scientific discipline. And this course that the PhD students need to take every year once. This is 15 hours. Uh, furthermore, uh, there is something like research skills. This course was also mentioned already. And during this course, the students, the PhD students, uh, learn how to be a good uh, scientist. So how to prepare the publication, how to prepare the grants, and, and how to prepare the presentations as well. Then we have a few, few courses related to the uh, ethical and legal aspects of the scientific activity, personal development, teaching and teaching skills. Uh, those courses are also very important uh, because some of the PhD students 
will be a teacher in the future. So this is good to, to have also this, this, uh, this knowledge. Then we have our English language. This is a 60 hours and elective courses, 60 hours as well. And most of the courses should be finished during the first two years of PhD study. Uh, except the one of the exception is the reporting seminar, because as I said, you should take this course once per year in your discipline. There are also additional courses uh, su su such that elective courses, uh, 60 hours and uh, additional languages, foreign languages that are also for free for our PhD students. And of course, here, uh, the curriculum that I presented, this is for the PhD students who has a scholarship, uh, the general scholarship. But we have also the, the PhD students uh, that, that, that's making the, the dissertation and the doctoral school uh, during the implementation doctorates. In this curriculum, we have a little bit different, let's say, scheme. Uh, there are course, course recent trend, uh, research trends in scientific discipline, research skills, reporting seminar, uh, of course, ethical and legal aspects of the scientific activity, personal development and teaching skills. As you see here, we don't have the elective courses that are obligatory uh, because, of course, this, those students uh, have, have to uh, different, different scheme, let's say. Uh, and also the students with the implementation doctorate can uh, have additional courses, 60 hours of elective courses and also foreign languages, but they are not obligatory here. Thank you very much. Thank you for insightful information. Now I have uh, some questions about another terms I would like to know uh, better. A question for uh, Professor Krzysztof Walkowiak uh, now again. What is an individual research plan and a midterm evaluation? Okay, so I mentioned these two terms, uh, the, the answering the first question. So I come back and provide some more details. So as I said before, these are the most important milestones of the doctor education. They were introduced by this new law in Poland. So before we have not had this uh, elements. And according to my experience as a dean and also as a supervisor, it was a very good change. So after the first year of education, the PhD student in consultation with the supervisor must submit this individual research plan. What are the most important elements of this plan? So first of all, the topic, the planned topic of the PhD, but here a disclaimer, it is not the, the final topic. So the final dissertation can have a little bit different topic. Another important element is the schedule. So you should plan the PhD for the next few years. So we require a plan for every semester, which activities, which elements like simulation, experiments, publications are planned for each of the semester. Moreover, we also plan to provide the research question and the hypothesis. Also, we, we want to see the related work and our elements. So on our web page, you can find the, the template for the research plan. There are many, many elements. So this is the, the one very important milestone. The next is this, this midterm evaluation. So it is made after the second year. And the key goal of the midterm evaluation is to check the progress on the research plan. So after one year, the committee, a special committee, which consists of three professors, one of them is outside our university, checks how the PhD student was working during the second year of education. The result of the midterm evaluation is binary, positive or negative. Positive means that the PhD student can continue the education, the research. Moreover, the scholarship increases by about 50%. The negative result means that the uh, PhD student is removed from the doctoral school. So it is a very important element. It is a little bit like a small defense because one of the elements of the midterm evaluation is a meeting with the committee, presentation, a seminar, and then discussion. Also, the PhD student must prepare a special report on the progress of the midterm evaluation. Once again, on our webpage, we have a special template for the report. So to summarize, these two elements are uh, were introduced just to check the progress of the PhD. Moreover, it is a system to a little bit force the PhD student and the supervisor to work just from the beginning. The first year is mostly to, to work on the proposal, on the schedule, on the topic. The second and next years are 
uh, focus on implementing the research just to go according to the plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Volkovec, for sure making it all very clear. Uh, right now, I would like to know more about some practical, uh, very practical information from uh, Professor Agnieszka Wumańska again. Uh, does the doctoral school has some office and how to find uh, any important information we would like to know about the doctoral school and, of course, about the recruitment process? Okay, so this is important and practical question, as it was said. Uh, so, of course, we have the doctoral school office and this office is in the main building of our university. So the room 313. Uh, on the second floor uh, in the main building, A1. Uh, how to find the information? Of course, we have a web page, and the web page has two version, versions. The first one is in Polish, and the second one is in English, and all informations are repeated uh, in Polish and in English, so all students and candidates can find everything that they need. Uh, but in case there are no information that you need, so please contact us or the people in our office uh, so we can support you and, and try to, to help with the, with the questions that you have. So everything you can find uh, on our, you cannot find on our webpage, you can, you can ask us by emails or by phones. Thank you very much. Thank you. I also encourage to check on uh, on the website and contact via emails. And I would like to ask our um, uh, I would like to remind our participants actually that you can all the time ask the questions using uh, uh, the chat room on our live. And uh, now maybe a few words from our students again. Uh, let's talk about your day to day life. Uh, what does a typical day for a PhD student look like at the doctoral school of uh, Wrocław University of Science and Technology? Uh, Natalia, I would like you to uh, answer first. Mm, okay, so it's really interesting question uh, because um, it is very difficult to describe only one day in life of a PhD student because our work is so uh, varied. Uh, on some days, PhD students attend classes, uh, teach students, have meetings with supervisors, uh, prepare manuscripts, uh, travel to conferences, uh, have meetings with other scientists, attend seminars or give seminars, of course. And also, it is uh, really much depends on the year of the PhD you are on. Uh, and I am currently in the third year of my PhD, so attending classes is uh, finally behind me. Uh, but uh, now, currently, I usually start uh, working at the university around 10 o'clock, uh, looking for my email inbox and answering messages. Uh, then I prepare my plan for the day and uh, start working in the, uh, in the lab. Uh, after doing the planned things in the lab, I usually analyze the results obtained and work on uh, my manuscripts. Uh, once a week, I have also meetings with my uh, supervisors where we can discuss uh, our results and also uh, plan the next steps in our research. Uh, of course, in between, uh, there is time for a break with uh, other PhD students also, where we can relax it and uh, also get to know each other better. Uh, and uh, also, um, as I am a member of uh, the Doctoral Students Council, uh, I also do various uh, things related to council affairs. So uh, usually I return home in the evening, uh, but I need to highlight that working on a PhD is very flexible and depending on other life commitments, uh, you can arrange your work uh, to suit you. So that that was my choice that uh, I am working from uh, 10 to, to 6 p.m. But uh, if you want to work from 7 uh, a.m. to uh, 3 uh, p.m., it's OK. Uh, everything also depends on your supervisor. So uh, you, you can just uh, uh, talk and uh, you can plan your, your day by yourself, I think. Thank okay, you. seems like a very productive uh, and busy day. And how yes, about... It is. 
<laughs> yeah, I can think about that. How about Arif? Uh, is it uh, at any point similar to Natalia's day? Well, thank you for giving me the option to talk again. Yes, in some points, I have similar day-to-day uh, -day work like Natalia, uh, because like Natalia mentioned uh, many things about how the life of a PhD student look like looks like. So for me, like I have to start my work from the morning because most of the, my work are related with laboratory. And also as Natalia mentioned that the PhD students uh, usually who are in the first or second year, they have to study some course. I am in my final year. I mean to say in fourth year, usually uh, I have finished all of my uh, courses that I have to study, but in our PhD, we also have to act as a teacher, like we have to take classes that we have to take after finishing our PhD. Then after that, uh, when we will finish our PhD, we do not need to take uh, any more classes as a PhD student or as a teaching assistant. So that is my regular activities to take my courses uh, with my students and also to conduct my research works in my laboratory at the same time to report my supervisor about my progress to write some article and also to publish it in journal if possible. And also I'm working as a co-supervisor or like a helping supervisor with master's student. Uh, like my main supervisor is their main supervisor as well as, but they're working under uh, like my guidance and uh, with me. So this is also a part of my uh, regular activities that I have to, for example, prepare them for their thesis. And also I have to teach them how to work in laboratory. Uh, as a PhD and as a senior person. So this is also included in my regular life. And also I have to go sometimes to Ishkala Doktorska about uh, to know some information for myself also as I'm an international representative. So many students from outside, uh, they usually email me to know many information about PhD, about their problems sometimes or to have some suggestion. So this is also one of my activities to help them, to tell them about uh, like PhD studies and uh, how to solve their problem or how to uh, fulfill their uh, queries about PhD, about their work. And apart from this, Natalia mentioned many things, like for example, uh, we also have time uh, to talk with each other or to know uh, the other PhD students. And also we can work flexibly uh how we like to organize our work we have this freedom so this is also i will say a very nice experience to work uh, as a phd student in laboratory and also to continue the research and studies and i will say this is a really enjoyable moment to learn something new and also to do and implement what we have learned practically uh, during our work that i would right. like and how do you like the experience of teaching? Uh, actually, I will say this is a very nice experience for me. Uh, when I was in my country, I also worked as a teacher for two years, full-time teacher. So teaching is not uh, difficult for me, rather than I like it very much to teach and to share my experiences, uh, my knowledge with the new peoples and to prepare them. Uh, so this I will say very nice. And also our university is very organized. And uh, I will say that the teachers have uh, flexibilities to, let's say, uh, deliver their lecture and also the quality of teaching in our university as a student and now as a teacher, as a PhD student, I will say it's a very high quality lecture that the teachers are providing to the students. And I will say that uh, uh, this is really nice to have this experience. Good. I can see you smiling when you're talking about this, so I can think it's a very inspirational part of your job. And also, let me ask you to cover a topic still around students' day-to-day -day life, because I would like to also know what about the accommodation arrangement, arrangements of PhD students at yes. WS. Mm, thank you for asking these questions. Actually, I would like to say, in our university, we have many dormitories. So, uh, for PhD students, our university has dormitories. Uh, some dormitories are only allocated for PhD students with uh, the full facilities of uh, internet and all the other things that we need. Like, uh, let's say, for example, also some uh, dormitory also has uh, places to park your vehicles as well as. 
and I will say the price of the dormitory is reasonable and also uh, the dormitories are not that much far from our main university so if someone wants they can uh, stay at the dormitory if someone is single they can also stay in the single dormitories and for the couples or married people we also have uh, dormitories um, so that they can also apply and also can stay in the dormitory for couples as well as and the security of the dormitory is very nice, I will say. Every time there are uh, some person who are, let's say, taking care of the dormitories, there are dormitory managers. So if you have some problem, uh, how to live, or if you have some issues with uh, something, you can directly go and, for example, talk to them. So they will try to solve uh, the problems. Uh, I am also living in dormitory for many years. So I will say the experiment, uh, experience for me to live uh, at the dormitory is quite nice and I have not faced any kind of problem up to this time. Okay, good to know. Thank you. And, that and is... I would like to oh, also yeah. mention, uh, I would like to mention also one thing that if some uh, students who are, let's say, for example, interested to apply for Polytechnica, they can also find, uh, let's say, my email at the website. So if you have some questions related to dormitory or something else, of course, uh, they can either write in uh, the chat box uh, during our live session. And also, if they want, they can just email me. I will try to answer their questions as much as perfectly I can. Thank you. Thank you so much about reminding that. And uh, that's a lot about student facilities, but I'm afraid we need to talk about students' duties too. So. Uh, maybe, Professor Krzysztof Walkowiak, what are the main responsibilities for a, a doctoral student? Okay, there are some, for sure, and most of them are were already mentioned, uh, so I will try to summarize it a little bit. So, first of all, probably 95% of your time will be the research work. So, you must show the progress of your research uh, activity, and we are checking this every semester during two first years of the doctoral uh, school, and then every year. So you should uh, progress according to the plan included in the individual research plan. And moreover, you should do the obligatory courses from our program. So as a student, so the number of all hours is about less, a little bit less than 300. So not so many of them. And mostly the PhD students are doing the obligatory courses during the first year. And then only this reporting seminar is, is left for uh, the second, third and fourth year. As it was mentioned, this is probably very important. You also, you also have to do some classes as a teacher. So during the first and last year, it is 30 hours. During the second and third year, it is 60 hours. So there are different classes, different courses. So probably you should ask the candidate for the supervisor about which type of courses you will be doing as a PhD student. Because usually in every department, similar courses are assigned to PhD students. Uh, also, you must do the milestones I mentioned a few minutes ago, like this midterm uh, mid -term evaluation or before the usual research plan. Yes, so everything is quite well regulated. It is uh, stated on our web page. And I think that uh, it, it is um, easy, quite easy to follow the path because also we provide as a doctoral school some trainings and some information. So before every of the milestones like individual research plan, we provide a meeting and to describe all the elements and also you can ask about any, any questions about a particular topic. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Professor, is it possible to pursue a doctorate with another foreign university to get like a double diploma? Yes, so we have such an opportunity and already we have about 15 such uh, stories, but every story is different. Yes, so it depends uh, on the law system in the second university from another country. And uh, there are many differences in the education systems between countries and also sometimes even within the same country, like in Germany, different lands have different systems. Yes, so every case is different. If we have such an opportunity, so it means that there is a second professor from another university, we are trying to proceed with a special agreement like Cocutel agreement or WD agreement. And in, within this agreement, we are trying to summarize the most important elements related to the education in the doctoral school, also related to the final phase, I mean the defense. Okay, so it is possible. We strongly encourage to do this because uh, usually this cocktail means that the PhD student goes for, for instance, one year to the second university 
also to make some uh, research, some experiments, and it is very fruitful for the future career of the PhD student. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We will be back to Professor Krzysztof Walkowiak soon, and now let's uh, chat with our PhD students one more time. Now, Arif, uh, I have uh, one more question about your um, Polish reality. What is the life in Poland uh, from the perspective of the international uh, PhD student? Well, thank you. Actually, I am living in Poland for many years. Uh, I have completed my master degree from the same university where I am now, and then I have started PhD. So I have a quite good experience uh, to stay in Poland and also in the city in Wrocław. So I will say that this city is full with beautiful Polish peoples and also European peoples. They are very nice and kind. Uh, I will say the young generation and also almost, uh, uh, I mean, a majority uh, part of people who speaks in English very well in shops, in shopping malls, also in the streets, we can find English speakers. So I think to speak with people and to share uh, their ideas with the local peoples, the foreign peoples will not have that much problem. And also I will say there are many things to see in Wrocław because Wrocław is a, uh, I will say important city in Poland with the full facilities of modern technologies and modern uh, things. And I will say that this city has a very beautiful uh, places. It has uh, many beautiful places to see like the uh, let's say the bank of the river, our university uh, campus also, let's say, for example, park and also the museum in Wrocław. So I will say to stay, uh, I will say that people who are staying here, they will uh, really like this environment. And also it's really enjoyable. I mean to say, I, I have uh, never faced any kind of problem uh, uh, up to this time to stay here and I really like this city. Uh, I usually suggest many people to travel here and also to visit this city because it's a really nice uh, city in Europe and also in Poland. Okay, that's very good to hear. Uh, one more thing I would like to ask our another PhD student, Natalia, uh, how, because your day-to-day uh, -day life includes being a member of the Doctoral Students' Council of Wrocław University, uh, how to become a member of, of the being a council? Uh, okay, so uh, once a year in October, I think, we organize the elections for uh, doctoral students council. So if you would like to be part of the council, you should submit your candidature in due time. Uh, and uh, then the council consists of uh, seven members uh, elected by a voting at the university wide doctoral students meeting. Uh, so uh, mm, that's uh, all about um, checking the term and then apply for the um, Doctor Students Council, and uh, the main task uh, of the Doctor Students Council uh, are to represent the doctoral community at the new university, but all, uh, also at the national stage. Uh, we are protecting uh, the rights of doctoral students, uh, expressing opinions on behalf of the doctoral community, promoting the doc doctoral community, we are uh, taking an active part in university committees, uh, for example, for scholarships. Uh, we are uh, participating in uh, decisions uh, making uh, concerning the uh, doctoral community. Um, I think that the next task is to uh, support and uh, realize scientific and cultural activities uh, in our university, but uh, also uh, in our country. Uh, taking care to improve the quality of education in doctoral school. Uh, and I think that the last, but uh, my favorite part, so uh, organizing uh, integration events for the doctor. Okay, I can see we're hitting some problems here. I don't know if you can hear me right now. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, and how about Natalia? 
I think she has uh, some problem maybe because I cannot okay. see or hear her. Yeah, I can see she's not with us anymore. So we will wait for her. And meanwhile, I will ask some other questions. Uh, uh, two questions for Professor Krzysztof Wolkowiak. Unfortunately, last two questions. Uh, uh, we're coming close to the end of the meeting. So what are the job prospects and perspectives after completing the PhD? Okay, so there are two key possibilities. So one is staying in academia and the second is industry. So in terms of uh, academia, uh, the, probably the most default way is to stay at the university as academic teacher, as a researcher. And we as a university hire still new persons. Also, we hire foreigners. It is not an offer for Polish citizens. However, the situation depends on the discipline, the department, the faculty, okay? Because uh, it, it is a function of many elements. And at the university, uh, you can do different uh, stuff. So you can focus mostly on the research work. Uh, you can make the, the next degree in Poland with habilitation and continue and you have your own PhD students. Another field of activity uh, is, uh, is teaching. Yes, so many people prefer to focus on the teaching. And also there is a third uh, uh, activity which I am doing currently, this administration stuff, which also gives a lot of satisfaction. It's also a nice opportunity. Uh, so our graduates, the people with PhD, can continue the, the research career not only in Poland. So our university is quite well recognized worldwide. So I know many stories of people who uh, were employed outside Poland at the universities in Western Europe, in United States, Canada, and so on. In terms of industry, uh, you can be employed in R&D sector, which is probably the, the best way and the best place to use the skills you gain during the PhD. So in Poland, the number of R&D departments is increasing. So many companies also in Poland, in Wrocław, they have very good R&D departments. So for instance, one of the largest companies in Wrocław is Nokia, and they have very big R&D department focusing on networks, machine learning, and so on. Also, you can be hired in R&D departments outside uh, Poland. Yes, so there are many opportunities. And maybe I was I was I will tell you some uh, my private story. So uh, last week my tenth uh, PhD student was um, uh, defending the, def uh, the the PhD. And so I have some let's say data, and five of five of them stayed at our university and they are working as, as um, assistant professors. And, and one person already obtained the uh, habilitation. Also, uh, two of my former PhD students are working at the university in uh, North America, one in the United States, second in Canada. Two of them are working in the United States in a company, and the last one is uh, working in IT company in, in Poland. Yes, so different stories. Uh, okay, to summarize a little bit, so there are many opportunities. I assume that if you are thinking about PhD, it means that you like to make some research. And there are many possibilities. And I think that in general, the R&D sector in Poland and worldwide is increasing because we need some new innovations and new, new solutions. Thank you. Okay, that's a lot of possibilities and it's good to hear that. So uh, let's hop into the last general questions to the Dean of the Doctoral School, Professor Walkowiak. Uh, what is an implement implementation doctorate? In Polish, it's uh, doktorat wdrożeniowy. Okay, so it is quite popular way of making PhD now in Poland. So this is a government program. It was introduced in 2017. So now we will have the seventh edition of the program. And the key assumption of the program is that it is an offer for people employed in a company during the whole uh, education doctoral school during the four years and in parallel making the, the PhD. So it is an offer for people who maybe do not want to switch to pure research work as in the doctoral school. So they, they want to combine both, making some uh, job in a regular company and um, the, the, the PhD. And here there are several very important assumptions. So first of all, it is a contest. So uh, there, there must be prepared a special proposal and there is a special evaluation system. So not everybody gets the, the funding, the money, because in, in this program, the scholarship is paid by the government money, not by the university money. So there's a special competition and there must be prepared a, a proposal. And the proposal is prepared by, let's say, three 
uh, three um, entities. So one is the PhD student, the PhD candidate. The second is the supervisor from the university. And the third one is the company, because it is assumed that the result of the research should be very useful for the company, for the activity of the company, with a big potential to be implemented. So the idea for the PhD must be strongly related to the, to the company activity. So the, the best scenario is that the candidate uh, is employed in the R&D department, and he or she is doing already research. It means that uh, he can do both the, the work for the company and also the, the research for the PhD. Otherwise, for instance, another scenario which is not recommended is that uh, the PhD student is working in the company for eight hours and then doing the PhD, the implementation PhD after hours in the evening or in the weekend. So this, this scenario is not uh, very feasible. Okay. So if you are thinking about this program, first of all, you should ask the company and you should check if there is any research problem that could be solved by a research methods because the topic still must fulfill the requirements for the PhD uh, dissertation. Uh, so we have a lot of experience. So once again, if you have any questions, you can visit our webpage because the application is open. You, you can apply for this program. Also, you can contact us to, uh, to ask the questions. And for the candidates for the implementation doctorate program, we also organize a special meeting in May because the first deadline here is the submission of the proposal for the ministry, which is the end of May. Then, uh, you're using the same schedule I mentioned before, you apply to the doctoral school. So there are, let's say, two, two paths. One is the evaluation of the minis uh, by the ministry of the, by the, of the proposal. The second path is the admission process to the doctoral school. In both paths, you must be successful to proceed and to start the doctoral implementation doctorate uh, from the October this year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe before we say bye, I will summarize who joined us today. Uh, Professor Krzysztof Walkowiak, uh, uh, Dean of the Doctoral School. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Professor Agnieszka Włomańska, Wise Dean for Doctoral Students. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Arif Eftekar Ahmed, PhD student. Thank you so much. Thank you. And last but not least, today with us was and is Natalia Tyszkiewicz, PhD student. Thank you so much. And that was an open day at the doctoral school at WUST. My name is Zuzanna Pawlak. Thank you uh, for all of uh, our these dear guests today. And thank you to our dear participants for joining us today. Um, fingers crossed uh, for all of uh, you guys, and I am sure uh, you will make it and we will see each other here at uh, WUST soon.